So, George, a new season, new horizons, new hope. So far, so good. Uh, St. James's Park. We're going to go behind the scenes, uh, really, uh, and talk about the structure that they're putting in place, the transfers that have taken place, the transfers uh, that may be still to come. It's all been very calm, hasn't it? Well, that's, in some ways, that's the biggest sort of shock of all. Newcastle behaving like a sensible club, doing sensible things. Um, I mean, it it has been transformative over the past past few months. Certainly, um, you know, not least Newcastle staying up and and signing players in the transfer window. But yeah, when you look at the takeover and where they are uh, now, they have quite a lot of serious people, um, substantive people in positions of authority, and it's it takes some getting used to. Who is um... Who has driven the sensible approach? Where where has it come from? Well, the phrase that they've used right from the start is process driven, and I mean that is an incredibly boring phrase. When you know they they come in and the narrative is that suddenly they're the, they're the richest club in the world and they've got all this money behind them, but they've I mean they've been laborious really in in a lot of the stuff that they've done. Um, you know, and you can kind of go right back to the start to them keeping Steve Bruce for a couple of weeks when really sort of everybody at the club, probably including Steve Bruce himself, you know, recognised that that was something that should have happened straight away to getting his replacement. It's taken them six months or or so to get Dan Ashworth through the door and then the same with the CEO. I mean, this is just the board. This is the board as it uh, was, was formulated with Amanda Staverley there, Jamie Rubin, and of course, PIF, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Saudi Arabia. I mean, everything has had to go back to Saudi to be signed off. That's one thing. Um, the uh, the interview processes have been handled by an outside agency and have been very, very rigorous for both management and, sorry, for both um, director of football and CEO. And so it's taken a long time for them to get where they are. But um I think you would you would suggest so far so good, and that it's been it's been worth it. Is there also Oli a, a, an external structure that they have to work within? Obviously, I mentioned FFP, but you know, do you think they're they're obviously conscious of of the restraints of the of the environment they have to work in? They are. They they've they've said that from from the start that you know that because of FFP they wouldn't be able to do um, what Manchester City did in. 2008 what Chelsea did in 2003 post 2003 um, it's a different environment now it's a lot harder for, for any club to build up from um, from a lower base and uh, I mean to be honest I think it's almost impossible to, to, to build up from a lower base and become a become a sort of super club stroke super team overnight um, that has become very difficult Newcastle are aware of that but um, we also know that the, there's a fair amount of leeway with 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 financial fair play. You see, you see Everton having very clearly overspent, but got away with it in 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 many many regards. You see Manchester City having, you know, maybe sort of taken a few shortcuts and cut a few corners, perhaps in in terms of FFP and UEFA, and they appear to have largely got away with it. So there is that. You know, it's not necessarily like you know like sort of Damocles hanging over them and, and they have to they have to comply within a really tight regulation but they also very clearly appear to have have their own financial discipline and um it's quite refreshing really i mean there's there's elements of, of the takeover that that um i think most of us have um, expressed reservations about or criticisms of but it's um I, I like the way they are operating in terms of the recruitment. And I think if anything, they probably could push it more because I don't think, you know, I, I suspect that if they did cross over some threshold in terms of spending, they would be able to get away with it further down the line. Everton, in fact, were, were one of the examples I was going to use. I mean, people are, people are kind of constantly saying, why aren't they behaving like Man City? One thing they're very conscious about not doing is behaving like Everton. I mean, that is, you know, that is an example that um, is kind of is writ large for everybody to see what can happen if you spend too much too quickly. You're chasing a dream. I mean, fine, 
uh, you say Ollie, they may they may have you know quote unquote got away with it to a certain extent except it doesn't feel like they're getting away with it now or they or that they got away with it last season in terms of the restrictions that were on their spending then and they just don't want to do that they don't want to splurge and then deal with the consequences of bad decisions i mean you can't you can't get everything right in the transfer market clearly but their philosophy has always been uh, it's been that sort of sustainability model Newcastle have spent a lot of money this year, probably 150 million, something like that, or committed to spending that much money in transfers. They've brought nothing in. They've brought peanuts in, mm. a couple of million here and there. And they want to have money to spend in the next transfer window and the window after that and the window after that. And, you know, obviously by that point, the idea is that they're bringing their own money in, whether through commercial deals and sponsorship deals, which by and large hasn't happened yet. And also eventually to bring money in through player sales. They just have not done that over the last few years because the squad hasn't been recycled. They haven't done any of that. So they have spent a lot of money already and brought very little in, but they know that that's not sustainable long-term, or medium-term. Eddie Howe, I think, is a big part of this in terms of had they done what certain other clubs have done when they've been taken over and if it had been very agent driven, very advisor driven, as has happened, not just with new owners, but often with new chairman, new, new directors of football at certain clubs, sometimes even with a new manager, you suddenly get a very sort of starstruck approach. That's really very clearly a case of agents having the ear of the, the CEO or the manager or the sporting director, or whatever. And with Newcastle, I think getting somebody as sensible and, pragmatic as Eddie Howe in right from the start and then getting somebody as sensible and pragmatic as um, Dan Ashworth it, it, it's been sensible right from the start everybody I remember when the takeover happened people were immediately sort of speculating joking in some ways about which players Newcastle were going to look for in January and it was going to be Coutinho Gareth Bale it was Deli Alley it was going to be everybody sort of um the, the sort of expensive big name big hitters that, that had fallen out of favor elsewhere and they were going to pay through the nose and it's been the opposite of that and I think that's really really impressive and just I'm, I'm sure George will want to jump in but it's 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 in terms of what else it's different to Jamie Rubin who's on the who's you know part of this new regime was part of that QPR regime which acted, behaved ludicrously, really, after the Tony Fernandez um, takeover a decade ago. And he has probably seen exactly what you don't do. It's probably been the ultimate example of what you don't do. And it's just been so sensible. It's been more sensible than the first year of Manchester City or, or the first year of Chelsea. It's been really considered. And as I say, it's almost almost too sensible. You want it, you, 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 may, you maybe want them to be a you know. Where's Balotelli? Where's Balotelli? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You could, you, you they, could have imagined, you could have imagined them going. For no, Balotelli. definitely, definitely. And I mean, I, I totally agree. So, I mean, I am the voice of Newcastle, you know, doom. I, I realise that, and certainly have been. But one of the things that I that I love about the club since they came back up was the the group of players that kind of originally Benitez got together, um, and that sort of feeling that got them out of the championship often sort of having to act in spite of what was happening at the top of the club, keeping it together during, during some very, very difficult seasons. And, you know, a lot of those players should have been moved on, but weren't because the club decided that it was easier and cheap, cheaper to keep those uh, players rather than kind of re reinvest. I mean, particularly when the takeover, you know, for mitigation, particularly when the takeover was lingering on and the pandemic hit and, and all that. But, what, what the club did in January and what they've carried on doing is sort of build on that ethos. So although some of those players have now started to leave, that sort of spirit that was in the camp, it's indistinguishable. You know, that sort of feeling that brought the club up is still there and they're building on it. And so the people, there's been, a, you know, a very clear, no dickhead sort of policy and who they've brought in. I would say, however, that they pretty much rang everybody. If you were a player and available, they will have spoken to their agents in January. It was total chaos. It was very successful chaos. 
Oli spot on. I mean, Eddie Howe was effectively the sporting director in in January. He took him away from the training ground probably too, you know, a bit too much. But they got through it, and they got through it with that sort of spirit there. And I I love that because, albeit it's been really tough over the pre over previous seasons, they have been a team to admire. That you know, it's not it's not been full of hateful characters, people desperate to get away, and they've kind of managed to build on that and. That is something that you know that I've really enjoyed. And as they've as they're getting better, um, you know, the good thing is that the players coming in have kind of got a reaction out of those players already here, and they've grown with it too. So, yeah, it's very very diff- different. They haven't gone out and brought the big names who then suddenly, uh, you know, sort of upset things in terms of wages or attitude or whatever. It's been a very very grounded revolution. Just one on Ashworth. I know everybody wants to talk transfers and, and transfers are the sexy things and that'll get, you know, it'll get people listening and all of this yeah. and rumours and so on and so forth. But he's responsible, presumably, for more than just player recruitment. Yeah. This is about oh, this yeah. is about getting a, a much maligned and neglected academy system up and running, presumably. Exactly that. Exactly that. And you know, transfers recruitment wasn't wasn't Ashworth's sort of big thing at Brighton. I mean, I, p- I think people sort of forget that. It doesn't mean he wasn't involved in it. But really, the first thing. I mean, there are so many things that he has to do at Newcastle. It's sort of unbelievable. But the first thing he has to do is get people talking, get people organised. The way it's been put to me as well in the past is that you know Newcastle have all these departments, but they're they're siloed. They're on their own. They're not talking. So who is the person that decides? You know, does the academy play the way the first team play? What is the idea behind getting loans out of the building? There's this story that that Rafa Benitez tells when he arrived um, uh, when Newcastle were going down and he was unable to to prevent it. He says that he spoke to the people um, and sort of said, "Are there anybody? Is there anybody not in the first team squad that I should that I should know about?" Ivan Tony was out on loan at, the, at that point. Nobody mentioned Tony, and so. You know, that sounds like it's a self-justificatory sort of thing for Tony moving on and now being in the Premier League. And of course, these things happen, but that can't happen anymore. You know, Newcastle have a good young player at the moment, Elliot Anderson. He may very well stay in the first team squad now because of John Joe Shelby's injury. But what is the pathway for him? What's the plan? That's Ashworth. The training ground, that's Ashworth. Getting the women's team uh, absolutely front and centre, fundamental to the whole club, that's Ashworth. He's got a huge amount to do. And yeah, I mean, he has been making calls. They haven't signed anybody since he's arrived, but people have left. And that's been really important because, uh, as I said earlier, for too long, people have been hanging around the club and not moving on. So he has he has a huge amount to do, but he also does have a, you know, he's got a, a good contact book and he is he's certainly doing all that. 